Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to look at the reaction of a alkene with a hydrogen halide, an HX acid. We're going to focus on the halogens chlorine, bromine, and iodine here. HF has been used for this type of reaction, but there are several factors that make it so slow and impractical. One is that the HF bond is strong relative to the other three here, and the acid HF is weak with a pKa of 3.2. HCl, HBr, and HI are all strong acids with pKa's less than zero. Not to mention that HF is pretty nasty stuff to work with. So we're going to leave it out of our conversation today. What I'm going to share with you here is the data. What actually happens when we carry this reaction out in the lab? In another video, we'll look at the curved arrow mechanism to understand how the products form. When an alkene reacts with a hydrogen halide, we produce an alkyl halide, where hydrogen of the acid and the halogen of the acid have added to each carbon of the alkene. This particular example, we're starting with a symmetrical alkene, where the two sides of the double bond are identical. And that means that regardless of how these two atoms add, we're going to get the same product. Both of these products are a two halo alkane. Now let's look at an alkene that is not equally substituted at both ends of the double bond. We'll use HBr as an example here. So I'm going to add H and Br to the two carbons of the alkene. I can do this two ways. One way would be to add the halogen to the more substituted side. Here it is a tertiary center. I have one, two, three alkyl groups. Alternatively, I could add that halogen to the less substituted side. Here it is secondary. It has two alkyl groups attached to it. These two compounds are constitutional isomers. When we analyze this reaction in the lab, we find that the tertiary alkyl halide is our major product, there's more of it, compared to the secondary alkyl halide, which is our minor product. This reaction then is labeled as regioselective. A reaction is regioselective when one constitutional isomer is produced in excess of others. In this case, we have the tertiary alkyl halide produced in greater amounts than the secondary alkyl halide. Another name for a constitutional isomer is a regioisomer, where we'd have a functional group or substituent that is in a different region of the molecule, a different position. Let's look at a couple more examples together. Let's get started with example A. We have propene reacting with HI. So the H and the I are going to add across the double bond. I can add the iodine to the more substituted carbon, that is the secondary site here, and the hydrogen to the less substituted side. Hydrogens are implied by the bond line drawing, so it is not necessary to draw them in here. Alternatively, I can add the iodine to the less substituted carbon, the primary carbon, and the hydrogen to the secondary carbon. When we isolate our products in the lab, we find that there is only one product. This is the only product observed, the secondary alkyl iodide. The primary alkyl iodide is not observed. This reaction is regioselective because one constitutional isomer is produced in excess of the other, even if it is 100 to 0. Now let's look at example B. We can add this halogen to the more substituted carbon. Here it is tertiary with three alkyl groups. Or we can add the halogen to the less substituted site. Here it is secondary with two alkyl groups. Take a moment and predict, based on some of the data that we've shared so far, which of these two products do you believe to be the major product in this reaction? The tertiary alkyl halide or the secondary alkyl halide? What we find out in the lab is that our major product is the tertiary alkyl halide and the minor product is the secondary alkyl halide. 
In comparing reactions A and B, we can see that the degree of regioselectivity depends on the nature of our alkene. Here, we're deciding between a secondary alkohalide versus a primary alkohalide. And in example B, it's tertiary versus secondary. We'll be able to better understand why the degree of regioselectivity is this way when we look at the mechanism in a later video. In our final example, we have an alkene that could yield a halogen on position two of our carbon chain, or we could add that halogen to position three on our carbon chain. Upon analysis here, we find that these two products are produced in equal amounts. We get 50% 2-chloropentane and 50% 3-chloropentane. If we look at the structure, we can see why this might be. Both of these halogens are secondary. We have two alkyl groups substituted at each of those positions. So there's no difference in the two ends of the double bond, so the probability results in an equal mixture of these two constitutional isomers. Could we classify reaction C as regioselective? No, it is not regioselective because two constitutional isomers are produced in equal amounts. There is not one produced in excess of the others. A Russian chemist named Vladimir Markovnikov worked on this chemistry in the 1860s. Markovnikov came up with a rule based on his experimental observations. What Markovnikov found was that when alkenes react with HX acids in an electrophilic addition reaction, they yield the more substituted alkyl halide. That is, the halogen adds to the more substituted site and the hydrogen adds to the less substituted site. Markovnikov's rule is based only on the experimental evidence. But as we'll find when we show you the mechanism in another video, understanding the mechanism will help us to explain why Markovnikov's rule is what it is. Stay tuned.